Hey everybody, welcome back to the ECG of the day. My name is Reed, and before we get started, don't forget that you can download the PDF of today's ECG down from the description below. And don't forget to like this video uh, and subscribe to the page to help us um, you know, keep doing these, these ECG videos. So let's get started. So the first thing I like to do is get an idea of what's going on with the rhythm, and I call that looking at the forest and the trees of the forest are my QRS complexes. And so maybe I start here in lead two. I see I've got a narrow complex rhythm. It seems to be pretty regular, occurring at a somewhat normal rate. If you see my rate here, I can calculate it by finding a QRS that lands on a solid line, and I see 300, 150, 175, 60, somewhere between 60 and 75. We'll call this 70 beats per minute. And you can see that if I scan through, we kind of maintain this rhythm throughout the entirety of the strip. I briefly look through and see I have P waves, that seem to be occurring in conjunction with my QRS complexes, and so that's reassuring as well. Let's evaluate those P waves. The first part of my, uh, you know, electric uh, axis is the uh, sinus node conducting to the atria, and so I like to look for my P waves to be upright in lead one, and upright in AVF. That tells me that if it's coming from the sinus node, that depolarization in the atria is heading down to the left, which is good. So this is a sinus. P wave, right, at 70 beats per minute, which is normal for the sinus node. Next thing I like to do is evaluate my interval. I start with the PR interval because the next thing that's going to capture that signal is my AV node, which is represented by the PR interval. And so if we find a QRS that seems to land on a solid line, let me see if I kind of scan through. Perhaps you can see maybe this one lands just after a solid line. And you can see my P wave starts a little bit before five millimeters. So I would say there's probably <clears throat> probably about six millimeters of, for the PR interval and each millimeter is 40 milliseconds. So my PR interval in this case is 240 milliseconds. That's too long, right? We want it to be in between 120 and 200 milliseconds. And so we have some slowing of the AV node, and so we have some type of AV block. We need to figure out what kind. We know that first degree blocks occur when every P wave is conducted by the AV node into the ventricles, but is at a prolonged rate. And so as we scan through here, we do see, like we pointed out earlier, that we've got these P waves that are associated with my QRSs, and that happens throughout the whole strip. And I also look to see, are there any extra P waves? I don't see any extra P waves that are not conducting. And so in that setting, this would be a first degree AV block. Okay, next part of the conduction system here is our QRS complex. And so our QRS complex, we can measure the axis. First of all, it's narrow. So we said it's a narrow rhythm. And so that tells me that if my QRS is less than 120 milliseconds, it's likely coming through my AV node down the His Purkinje fibers, which is very rapid ventricular depolarization. You can see I have an upright QRS in lead one. I have an upright, just a smiley upright QRS in AVF. And so that tells me that my QRS axis is likely down and to the left somewhere in this region, which is good. It's where it should be. I see that I've got R waves in V1, so my septal R wave in V1 is present. But you can see maybe some slow transitioning of that R wave until it becomes dominant later here in V4. And so maybe some slow R transition, transition. And so there's some causes for that that we'll look for later. And then quickly, I'll look at my QT intervals. And so I just pick a couple R's here, measure the interval between the two. In midway, I should see the previous T wave end before there. And I see that. So my QT interval, in this case, seems to be appropriate. So we have our rhythm down. Now let's take a look for any pathological Q waves or ST or T wave changes that would make me concerned for um, some ischemic or infarcting uh, tissue. And first thing I notice, and you probably notice as well, is that we have some ST elevation that is most notable in the precordial leads in V3, in V4, 
especially you know if you look at you know the difference in the in the amplitude of this hyperacute T wave, especially compared to the amplitude of that QRS, right? T waves typically are, you know, like 25% of the amplitude of that QRS. But in this case, this is a very hyperacute, right? The area under the curve is higher. So there's some ST elevation in leads V3 and V4 in the precordium. I've also got a little hint of ST elevation and hyperacute T waves, maybe somewhere in the kind of these inferior leads, leads to an AVF, which would make somewhat sense, right? Kind of on the more inferior leads that are also kind of capturing maybe some of the lateral part of the inferior myocardium, right? And so we have anterior ST elevation and a little bit of inferior inferior ST elevation. And so we know that the left anterior descending travels, the left anterior descending travels down the interventricular septum, so in between their left and right ventricle, right? So the LAD travels kind of down the middle of the myocardium, somewhere in this region, right? It travels down the middle and supplies, you know, half of the left ventricle and a lot of the interventricular septum. And so if the LAD occludes, we're going to see some changes in V3 and V4. We might also see, like we saw, a little bit of extension into lead 2 and AVF, right? And so this is kind of a left anterior descending, descending artery type syndrome. And so we look for reciprocal depression. You don't always get reciprocal depression, but you can see a, maybe a hair, just a touch of inverted T waves, right? You can see maybe just a little hint of some depression in inverted T waves in AVL. And so with all of these findings and with this poor R wave progression, right, that's probably because the anterior portion of this myocardium, which is represented by a little bit of V2 and V3, is having a bad time or difficult time conducting that tissue due to the uh, LAD occlusion. And we know that the LAD, just so that everyone is clear, is, a, is one of the branches off of the left coronary artery. And so let's put this all together and what do we have? We've got a sinus rhythm at a rate of 70 beats per minute. We have a first degree AV block. We also have uh, inferior and more so uh, anterior ST elevation with perhaps some reciprocal depression seen in AVL. And so this person, given this clinical picture, is likely having uh, an LAD, actually confirmed LAD infarct. This person got a stent placed in the, their LAD. So I hope this helps. If you have any questions, feel free to throw them down to the comments. Um, and if not, Thank you so much for watching. We will see you tomorrow. Take care.